Okay, welcome back to the part three of implementing table-based CRC. And in this tutorial presentation, we will actually show you the Verilog code and try to show you how the Verilog code is mapping to the schematics we showed in part one of the presentation. So let's dive into that. So Verilog code basically is provided. I'll, I'll show you a link to the Verilog code from GitHub or Bitbucket so you can download the code and try it and run it yourself and use it if you would like to use it somewhere so this is essentially the skeleton of the module it has the clocks uh, reset there's a 256 bit data coming in and the tag is essentially a signal that shows how many bytes are valid tags are usually not very useful for any other clock except the last clock cycle of the packet because in that last clock cycle, even though you have 32 bytes in a clock cycle, some of them may be invalid. So the tag shows you which bytes are valid and you can, based on this tag, align them to your processing pipeline. And then SOP and EOP, as I had showed earlier, was the start of the packet and the end of the packet. With that, we can produce these two signals, CRC valid and output CRC, which is 32-bit CRC value, which is completely processed and they are output after the computation is done and alongside that we can also output the 256-bit data the 5-bit tag and the SOP EOP after processing. Normally uh, these should be aligned so that when the data is output the CRC is valid with the EOP but it really depends on what you want to do and how you want to use the CRC so it's uh, left to the user to process it as needed but in this case i do show you how the computation of the 32-bit crc is achieved and then you can align it to your own suitable purposes so let's look at the slide that we showed in the part one of the presentation but here we're going to map this slide into the actual verilog code and i'm going to show you how the pieces fit together so in this case there are actually two stages that i would shown everything up to the last clock cycle fits in one part of the code and then the last clock cycle is a little bit different i'll show you how so the f in the beginning the crc is initialized to ffs and then the input data basically is mapped based on the tags um, into these lookup memories and these lookup memories basically do the processing of CRC and produce the output part of the CRC for each byte lane and there are 32 byte lanes on the input data because it's 256 bit data and once those are mapped we basically reduce those byte lanes using XOR logic and on the CRC side also you will see this uh, same thing happening and then we'll reduce it down so let's look at the code and we'll look at first the um, the mux on this side so let's look at line 361 and in 361 you see that the data could if it's the beginning the very first clock cycle then the data should be the CRC value is F all F's and if it's anything else if it's any other clock cycle it's the fed back data from the previous clock cycle or the previous processed clock cycle so you see that here that in line 361 this stage of CRC data which is S4 combinatorial stage, which is being set up here, the S4 stage. And in this, either the data is FFs or it's taking from the next output, which is S5 here, and it's fed back here. So this data is prepared, and then it'll be looked up in the CRC table, and you can I can show you that as well. If you follow this S4C CRC data signal, you see that it's being fed into this lookup CRC function, and there's four of those, because for each byte lane of the CRC, it goes through its own uh, lookup functions. So these lookup CRC memory functions are right here. And you will see four of those functions because if it's not the last clock cycle, we know deterministically that the f how much the CRC byte lanes evolved by, like how many zeros are after the CRC is processed for each byte, which was the parallel computation that we talked about. So these functions are predetermined for everything up to the last clock cycle. And so we, in the stage one, in the first stage, we basically use these lookup CRC functions 
which are right here in UC lookup CRC. I have mapped it here so you can easily map this schematic into these uh, functions. So lookup CRC, look for that. This has four CCRC data which was formed by this MUX is feeding into this. And then eventually we XOR all of this together to get the final value of CRC. Now let's look at what happens in the last clock cycle. So what happens is that in the last clock cycle, so this is a packet here. We see the SOPs coming through and then the, the, e, the EOPs coming here. Uh, basically, if I may just write it down, this is the EOP of the packet. So um, data is flowing through the very beginning clock cycle. We start off with FFs and the SOP data, SOP and the data is here. And imagine in each of these clock cycles, we do the memory lookups and we process and there's always 32 bytes of data till you reach the EOP. There's always 32 bytes of data. So these functions are pretty simple memory lookups because each byte lane knows how many bytes are following. And so CRC evolves by a fixed function and the data evolves by a fixed function. And so all that's pretty easy. Now, the computation of the final CRC value feeds into the next CRC here and and the data is the next clock cycle of data. And so we keep preparing that, keep running through, keep evolving till the last clock cycle. Now watch here what happens. In the last clock cycle, we feed the CRC and we compute the CRC from the previous stage and we leave it here. We do not evolve that forward. And the CRC computed on the data side, this data part of the CRC is fed into this last stage and in this there is no more memory lookups for the data side once the data side of the last clock cycle with the eop it's it's basically stored here while the crc from the previous stage from stage two which was the complete crc it needs to be evolved and you and i've already showed you why this needs to evolve this way because the number of clock cycles of data here is not always 32 it could be 31 it could be 30 it could be one so the CRC has to evolve by a more complex function. So we take this CRC from this last stage, not from three, but from two. We take the CRC and we evolve it by the knowledge of how many bytes are valid, the tag function. The tag shows us how many bytes are valid. So we evolve this last CRC by that function and we had the data side of the CRC already stored and then we basically merge all this XOR and get the final value of CRC. So now let's look at the code here. And this last stage, you can see that the data portion of CRC, which was this side, is going through and just getting stored and being just pipelined so that we can XOR it correctly with the final stage of the CRC processing. And the CRC that is coming from the previous stage now has to go through this complex uh, memory lookup and XOR circuit. So that you see that the CRC from the previous n minus one stage uh, is being fed through this stage called S2 lookup, and there's a remainder function here. And I'll let me show you that. So if we go to line 369, uh, you can see that you can see that we have computed the remainder function, which is preparing CRC. So it's preparing CRC for being looked up through these memory tables and if there's only one byte, then the three bytes will basically not go through the memory lookup. They are just remainders and they're, they're just gonna be XORed as such. So we prep that right here. We see that based on how many, what was the tag, we prepare the CRC and we prepare the remainder. And the CRC part gets looked up through these memory channels and there's a byte for each byte of the CRC. There's four bytes here, so up to four lookups may be required here, but they have to go through this whole array of 32 lookup tables because you don't know how many bytes are following in that last block. There could be one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, so you have to prepare this last lookup based on this, and you can see that here. It's being set up in line 369. The MUX there shows you how to set this stage up. So you have the right amount of remainder left and the right amount of memory lookups and then you XOR all this together and then you have from the data CRC of the last clock cycle you have data CRC and then you can XOR them finally to get the final value of CRC. So that's essentially all the code there is and then eventually you can see that once all this computation is done 
we will get to this final CRC by just XORing all that uh, data and that becomes the final CRC which is essentially the CRC here once that last stage this last stage which is the special stage and it's not just one stage there's many XOR stages here but you can see that all that's happening here is that the CRC is going through the memory lookups because it's not just a fixed there is always 32 bytes of data in that last stage there is variable number of bytes so we prep for that we go through that and then then we XOR all that back together and the CRC is finally ready this might take many clock cycles but the major idea in this paper was that we can unfold all that and it just becomes a feed forward pipeline there is no feedback and the feedbacks have all been simplified because the only feedback is the CRC and so we have minimized this to be like five XOR functions so this is a very simple pipeline whereas this is 32 XOR functions all the 32 lanes have to be XOR together so this has been reduced by using this highly pipelined stage and the same thing in the last clock cycle happens for CRC because it gets looked up through the 32 lookup stages and then boiled down to simply a 32-bit value at the end which we combine so that's the major idea guys so hopefully you understood and um, enjoyed this um, presentation and we have the code available on github I'll leave the link below the presentation uh, video and feel free to check out the code and go through it and see if you have questions and you can leave me some feedback I would be more than happy to answer any outstanding questions and once again thanks for spending the time looking at this uh, video and hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to making more such informative videos for everyone thanks and bye